The usual way to do development with an Arduino is with something like a prototype shield, or possibly to build a whole custom Arduino from scratch, so everything integrated onto one board. The problem is, what do you do for prototyping a custom Arduino? Is there some middle point? I got a really interesting package in the mail this week. It's this device here. It's called a 28-pin AVR prototype board. It comes from Protostack, which is in Australia. And basically, it's a board to allow you to build your own um, Atmega-based machine. And it's got a uh, mounting point here for a 28-pin um, AVR. It's got a mount for the oscillator, all of that sort of thing, and a huge prototyping area, which is really cool. Because if you look at the, pro the area on a normal prototyping shield like this, compare it to this board, you can fit an awful lot of stuff on one of these. So it's very handy if you don't want to go to the trouble of building a full custom PCB, but you want an integrated Arduino with all of your extra I.O. on it, and you want it all on one board, which is very, very cool. So I'm sure you can't be bothered watching me solder one together. Here's one I prepared earlier. What I've done is fitted the, um, the components that come with the basic kit, but I've put an Atmega 328P uh, processor on it, which I actually just pulled out of a Dua Miller nerve. And if I grab a battery and we power this one up, this Arduino is loaded up with the blink sketch, so you can see um, power indication is here, and the green LED, which is connected up to PB5, which is actually digital pin 13 on an Arduino, is just blinking once per second. So what you have there, essentially, is a minimal Arduino, but with huge prototyping area, which means you can do lots of things with it. It's really, really cool. Um, I'm really impressed with these boards. I like them a lot. There are, only, um, there are really only three things that I can find wrong with them, and I feel kind of bad even mentioning this. It's a bit nitpicky. Um, one thing is that the holes themselves don't have pads on the top. There are pads on the bottom, but not the top, which means that if you want to do something like put a surface mount LED or other surface mount parts down, you can't do it on the top of the board. It has to go on the bottom. Uh, the other little trivial thing is there is no area on it specifically for a power supply. So in the case of this board that I soldered up, what I did was I just stuck a 7805 voltage reg on there, a smoothing capacitor and things like that, a little header so I could plug in a battery or power supply. But there's no dedicated area. And I can understand why the designers did that. A lot of the time you're not necessarily going to want a power supply on the board. You just want maximum prototyping space. And it's easy enough to design one yourself. So. Um, I can see why they left it off, but it would have been handy if just in the corner of the board there was a spot to stick on a 7805 and a couple of filter capacitors, and it would have made it really easy. You wouldn't have to think about where to put all the parts on. Um, and the final little niggle is they've got these fantastic um, ground and 5 volt bus bars all around the board, which is really, really handy. It's very convenient. But the problem is the marking on them, uh, the plus 5 volt line is a solid white line and the ground line is an outline with red in the middle and my brain just can't get itself around that. I keep thinking of the, um, the outline with the red in the middle as being 5 volts and the solid white one as being ground and in fact while I was soldering this together I put several and had to pull them off and put them back on again and there's no actual indication on the overlay it would be nice if it said VCC and ground, for example, just next to the appropriate bars in the right place. That would make it really easy. You wouldn't even have to think about it. But as I said, those are all really, really minor quibbles. This is a really cool board. I'm going to use it in um, a few of my own projects, particularly things where I want everything integrated onto one board, but I want a lot of I.O. or a lot of supporting parts on it. So I can really highly recommend these. Um, and the other thing is that they're great value. You can buy either the bare board or the board as a kit, which includes an Atmega 8 um, and a few supporting parts, complete for about US $15. And if you think about it, that's about what you pay just for a bare prototyping shield or a prototyping shield kit. For that price, you essentially get a complete machine. So yeah, they're great value. I like them a lot.